Ooh, you'd like to steal my super-secret demon broth recipe, wouldn't you? Well, hands off! Oh, good. You two are back to barrage me with your inane questions. We missed you too, Grandpa Stinky. Do the health inspectors ever make you wear a beard net? What's cooking? Oh, you'd like me to tell you about my demon broth, wouldn't you? So you can steal another patent! Come on, you're not still angry about that, are you? That was like 30 years ago! And that's 30 years I could have been living off the riches from a gooey molasses tar cake! Can't you at least tell us what's in it? If you're so curious about it, pick up a can after I've made a fortune selling it to every grocery store from here to Madagascar! What's so great about that demon broth anyway? What's great is that it's nutrient rich, that it's mine, and that I'm not letting you two parasites anywhere near it! Once I've perfected this recipe, I'll never need to worry about money again! Boy, Grandpa Stinky, I sure am glad to see you back working in this diner again after returning from a long time away to work with your granddaughter, who's also coincidentally named Stinky. Was all that really necessary? Sorry, Max is all short-term memory. I have to bring him back up to speed every once in a while. Ah! Giant talking dog! How's the diner business treating you? It's been all I can do just to turn this back into a place that lures decent people in to eat. The carefully placed rat droppings are one of those flourishes you don't notice until they're missing. Did you see all the decoration she scattered about? Rubbish! At least then, we had some customers. I, you really appeal to the lucrative insect and talking statue demographic, I'll give you that. Isn't it kind of overkill to have a radio and a jukebox? Anything to drown out the noise my granddaughter calls music. It ruins the digestion. To be fair, Sam, Stinky's food does require you to be 100% focused on digestion. What station are you listening to? There'd be only one station worth listening to in the greater New York area. WSNT. You're listening to WSNT, all sea shanties, all the time. Yo-ho. It must be great getting back to work with your partner again. I don't know. He's kind of cramping my style. Oh, you were talking to him. Yeah, never mind. Oh, it's great. She has me working the register and making deliveries. A master chef like myself. And she won't even let me in the kitchen. I already explained, Grandpa. I just have to make it nicer so that it's, um, worthy of your skills. Pah! Aw, oh, you and Girl Stinky will be working like a moment oiled machine in no time. Mark my words, boyo. Boyo? <laughs> Do people really say that, Sam? That woman will be the death of me. That's the idea. Can't you and Girl Stinky just get along? All this negative energy is bad for my psychic balance. She's the one locking a master chef like me out of his own kitchen. <laughs> it won't be a problem after I perfect my recipe and make me fortune. As part of the Freelance Neighborhood Watch, we're warning everybody about an alien gorilla on the street. General Skunkapi? We do well to have more of his kind in this neighborhood, instead of these shiftless layabouts loitering around until somebody comes to ask them questions. Wow, I never would have guessed Grandpa Stinky was so prejudiced against non-player characters. Skunkapi is a true commander. He's going places. I could even see him making it to the White House. And burning it down, most likely. Just be careful around Skunk Ape. Ah, you just don't trust him because he's no human. Uh, what? He's welcome here any time. My granddaughter could do a lot worse than to court a magnificent specimen like General Skunkapi. Ew, gross. Stay cheerful, Grandpa Stinky. Ah.
convenient his and hers post-dinner purging barrels. Oh, shame on you, Max. You know how Stinky explicitly told us never to go back in the kitchen. I was hoping you'd call. No, 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 don't speak. Those detectives are finally gone, but someone might be listening in. We should meet in person. Perfect. I'll leave right away. What? Of course not. And Sam and Max don't suspect a thing. We interrupt this program for a breaking news bulletin. Officials for the city's $700 million lottery jackpot drawing have announced that there is one winning ticket sold to unemployed and somewhat pathetic Molopolis resident, Harry Molman. Woohoo! So long, suckers! What about your super secret demon broth? <laughs> Take it! After today, I never need to worry about money again! Wow, would you look at that, Max? Amazing! Wow, would you look... Tell Doris... Sorry, I wasn't more... careful. Oh no! Now we'll never be able to find Mama Bosco's power core. Wow, that looked painful. Any idea when you'll be done eating, Flint? Heck, I don't know, Sam. Sometime in the future, all right? How about now? It'd be a lot sooner if you stop asking me, okay, champ? Ever since Girl Stinky took over the kitchen, Stinky's signature pies have gotten marginally more edible. The insect bits give the dough that extra bit of crunch. This phone only accepts Dutch Gilder coins. Sorry, Sam. All I've got are some yuan, a few euros, and six bucks in Italian lira. Where do you keep all that change? In my sock, of course. You're naked. Where do you keep your sock? That's none of your damn business. It says right here in the instructions. Sheesh, the mole people are taking their own sweet time getting our subway station back into shape. Well, to be fair, they've been subcontracting to the Mutant Alligators Union. Those guys are notorious loafers. Rosemary keeps wandering off and leaving this thing behind. This broken gum 